Hello friends, welcome to a session of respiratory diseases. Today's topic of discussion is ARDS, that is Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. It is even a major component of critical care medicine. So ARDS is also labeled as a shock lung. It is a severe dyspnea of rapid onset, hypoxemia and diffuse lungs injury leading to a respiratory failure. So for ARDS, we have a, a three major points. As name suggests, it's an acute onset. Second thing, there should be a diffuse lung injury. Means, uh, and we can uh, evident it by looking at chest x-ray. So the chest x-ray will look like it will be diffused. At least there will be an involvement of three-fourths of lungs and it will be a bilateral involvement. And third important point is hypoxemia, that is decreased O2 pressure. So these are the three major components of ARDS. This is the first part. And other second part before discussing to uh, second part of ARDS. Do you think the uh, presentation of acute respiratory failure with bilateral infiltrates on chest x-ray and hypoxemia will indicate only ARDS? No, even it can indicate cardiogenic edema that is pulmonary edema. It may be because of left ventricle, ventricular failure and even mitral stenosis. And second commonest cause may be alveolar hemorrhage. So, with these uh, three uh, features, we need to differentiate this ARDS from uh, other causes like left ventricular failure. So, the fourth and most important point in defining ARDS and this point is usually uh, forgotten by students. So, this fourth point is that is the pulmonary capillary waste pressure and this pulmonary capillary, capillary waste pressure indicates left atrial hypertension and it should be less than or equal to 18, 18 mm of Hg. So uh, these are the four important features of ARDS. We will again discuss this uh, issue of hypoxemia that is low oxygenation uh, and the definition of ARDS depends on what is the uh, PaO2 that is pressure of atrial O2. We will see the issue of hypoxemia. These all four points you can see in acute lung injury that is ALI and ARDS and difference is only is of oxygenation and oxygenation we can measure it by PaO2 ratio of PaO2 and FiO2 this PaO2 is you can uh, get it from ABG that is that is arterial blood gases FiO2 is a, a fractional inspiration O2 that is oxygen so means uh, what is the percentage of oxygen you are giving to patient it may be ranging from 10% to 100% and this 10% indicates that FiO2 is 0.1, 100% indicates the FiO2 is of 1 and 50% FiO2 indicates the FiO2 is of 0.5. If patient has PaO2 of 150 and, and when you are giving FiO2 of say 60, that is 0.6, the ratio will come to 50. Okay, that means when the ratio of PaO2 to FiO2 will come between 200 to 300 it will label as acute lung injury and it is a less severe form of ARDS and these patients are at risk of developing ARDS when this ratio is less than 200 it defines ARDS so this ratio will be less than 200 so example will be when the PAO, PAO2 is 150 when you are giving 100% oxygen means 150 by 100% oxygen means 1. So ratio will come 150. So that patient is in ARDS. Coming to etiology. Etiology of ARDS may be medical causes or it, that etiology may be surgical. Medical causes common as being sepsis or pneumonia. Other causes are drug overdoses, multiple transfusion and uh, surgical causes like trauma and burns. And even aspiration of gastric content will lead to ARDS. Coming to pathophysiology, we will again go to board to what is pathophysiology of ARDS. Coming to a pathophysiology of ARDS. Pathophysiology of ARDS will start from injury which will lead to phase of inflammation, which is exudative phase, which will lead to proliferative phase and finally fibrotic stage. These are lungs, lungs of ARDS. So this injury may be a medical cause or surgical cause like we discuss it may be a sepsis, pneumonia or trauma. It will start a phases of inflammation and it starts with exudative. If we maximize uh, this part it will look like alveolar, this is the alveolar, this is the capillary. 
because of injury there will be a, a inflammation and which will disrupt this alveola and even it will disrupt this space and even this endothelium of capillary and because of destruction there will be a release of fluid and will cause edema and this edema in x ray will look like uh, haziness bilaterally so this is a phase of exudation and this phase will last for around 7 to 10 days and if patient goes through this exudative phase he will come across with proliferative and this proliferation phase is not a proliferation of disease basically it's a start of repair and this indicates proliferation proliferation word indicates a proliferation of pneumocytes too which try to heal this damaged lung and will start repairing and few patients may uh, successfully come out of uh, any any damage and few may go to fibrotic stage and a patient who goes to fibrotic stage they are at risk of developing a sudden pneumothorax and in chronic cases they may lead to chronic pulmonary hypertension so this uh, ARDS lungs are basically stiff lung they are non-compliant lungs coming to differential diagnosis as I told you the commonest differential diagnosis is being cardiogenic pulmonary edema followed by alveolar hemorrhage and even a diffuse interstitial pneumonitis. So these are the three commonest differential diagnosis of ARDS. Coming to a treatment of ARDS, while discussing a treatment, you need to treat the underlying causes of medical or surgical cause followed by supportive care and then prevention of ventilator induced lung injury and followed by prevention of alveolar collapse and fluid management. Regarding supportive therapy, this supportive therapy as ARDS is a commonest cause of mortality or morbidity of ICU, uh, there is very, uh, the, the place of supportive management is very important and there is a famous mnemonic like fast hug. The famous, famous mnemonic is fast hug and this F indicates feeding that means nutrition, you, you know, you need to care nutrition of that patient. So F is nutrition, A is analgesic, S is sedation, analgesic, S is sedation, T is prophylaxis for thromboembolism. If that patient remain bedridden for more than uh, 3 or 4 days, there is a very high chance of developing pulmonary embolism. So you, you need to give a uh, thrombo prophylaxis in the form of, you can give enoxoparin or heparin and dose of enoxoparin will be 0.4 uh, ml once in a day and it depends on a weight of patient. This H indicates you need to keep head end of patient higher than foot end and it will prevent aspiration of a gastric content and will uh, prevent one of the major cause of uh, ARDS. And this U indicates ulcer, prevention of gastric ulcer which may be a potential cause of gastrointestinal bleeding and if you are not taking care of that ulcer, patient may develop sudden gastrointestinal bleeding and he may succumb. So the care of ulcer is very important and you need to uh, take care of that ulcer by giving protein pump inhibitors. Coming to glucose, glucose in and this glucose means you need to take care of blood sugar level. You need to keep in, in or at optimum level by giving insulin. Coming to ventilator management and when you talk regarding ventilator management of uh, ARDS, the issue of ventilator induced lung injury uh, need to discuss in detail. As the lungs of uh, ARDS are poor compliant, they are difficult to open and when you give attempt to inflate that consolidated lung, it will over distend normal alveoli and lead to a damage to those normal alveoli. We can see it on board. This is a schematic presentation of alveoli. These are open and uh, or comparably normal alveoli and this is collapsed alveoli. This alveoli is seems to be affected because of ARDS and when we try to give a conventional uh, tidal volume that is uh, that is up to 10 to 12 ml of kg and this when the tidal volume goes to this lung as this as this alveoli fail to open all air will uh, go to normal alveoli and and this alveoli will over distain and because of over distain over distension it will rupture and this alveoli again will damage by putting patient on ventilator and when you give conventional tidal volume we do more damage than treatment of a patient 
so you need to take care of this tidal volume you cannot cannot apply conventional tidal volume formula to uh, ards patient so what what should be a tidal volume to this patient so it not it should not be a more than 6 ml per kg of body weight so it should be a 6 ml per kg body weight and normal conventional is 12 ml per kg 10 to 12 ml per kg you can prevent over distension of normal alveoli coming to a next important issue that is prevention of alveolar collapse the, the issue of recruitment it is uh, recruitment is basically the lower inflation point on pressure volume curve which represents alveolar opening and it helps to keep lungs open at this point uh, is it, it indicates optimal pip that is 12 to uh, 15 mm of hg so coming to uh, again a uh, board this is i told you this is a collapse alveoli if we are able to open this open this collapse alveoli it will be much better for oxygenation so what are the ways to inflate this collapse alveoli and this collapse alveoli may may open uh, when patient takes inspiration at the height of inspiration that the the pressure of lung may go up to 20 mm of hg but as patient tries to exhale the pressure will go down and again this Uh, this alveoli will collapse so to avoid that we need to increase or maintain peak end expiratory pressure so at the end of expiration there should be a pressure which will keep this collapse alveoli open so here we can use a peak that is peak end expiratory pressure and the value of peak pressure we can get by recruitment method by using volume pressure curve and uh, that the normal value of pip in ards is uh, usually ranges from 12 to 15 mm of hg other mode of prevention of this collapse by uh, inverting uh, inspiration to expiration ratio that is ie ratio uh, usually uh, the inspiration is uh, inspiration is uh, shorter than expiration we take more time to exhale rather than inspire but in in ards patient we need to keep the time of inspiration to expiration more than one that is inspiration should be longer than expiration when you you keep this inspirational time more then there will be a development of dynamic pressure at the end of expiration and which that pressure will act like pip so again this inversion of ie ratio is a very important point or in maintaining that alveoli open other strategies of ventilation are mechanical ventilation in the prone position second is high frequency ventilation high frequency mean this machine this ventilator is basically very noisy machine and it vibrates with speed with a speed of 5 to 25 cycle per second and the respiratory will be same that is 5 to 25 cycles per second it's not per minute is per second and the tidal volume will be much less it will be 1 to 2 ml of uh, body weight so if patient uh, weight is uh, 50 that uh, uh, tidal vol- volume will be ranging from 50 ml to 100 ml but the rate of respiration is very high and this this higher frequency ventilation uh, uh, some trial has shown outcome by using this ventilation coming to other therapy that is extra corporeal membrane oxygenation that is ecmo this ecmo again has shown a clear benefits in neonate so some clinician apply the same method or same replacement th- therapy for ards patient regarding to fluid restriction and diuretics in in the management of ards the, there are two major points in manage management of ards first one is to maintain the tidal volume uh, lower that is of range 6 ml per kg and second most important point is fluid management that is the patient need to restrict fluids you can restrict fluids or you can give diuretics this, this is helpful in maintaining left atrial play pressure in lower side and it will again prevent pulmonary edema in ards patient coming to other forms like glucocorticoids there is uh, no recommendation to support use of high doses of glucocorticoids regarding nitrous oxide they are not recommended so if you are thinking this ards is a basically inflammatory uh, condition so logically logically one may give glucocorticoids 
but no there is a no place for a group of corticoids and this may be mcq in your exam uh, so you should not take glucocorticoids as a, a treatment for ARDS. Before concluding this session, again I need to tell you that there are only two highly recommended therapies of uh, ARDS that is a low volume uh, ventilation and second thing is a fluid uh, restriction or use of uh, diuretics to keep atrial play pressure low. So these are the two most important point of ARDS management.